Okay, so welcome to the Shape It Up podcast. Today we are discussing the importance of getting the correct sneaker and the right fit for your shoes when you work out. And I am so thrilled today. We have a special guest today. So welcome, Dave Welsh. Did I say that right? Good. Okay. Um, so Dave is the owner of the running company of Haddonfield, Morristown, Medford, and Mulligan Hill. So thanks so much for being here, Dave. And before we get started into today's topic, I wanted to dive into your backstory a little bit because um, as I was kind of fact finding, I know we've kind of been in touch with, with each other over the years. And I know you came when I had a studio, you actually did a um, little seminar at the studio, which was awesome, but I didn't know, um, like I found it really interesting that you went to school to do engineering and wound up working at New Balance yep. as an engineer. So could you tell us a little bit more about that and how you kind of started your, your company? Yeah. So um, I guess back in the um, late 90s, I was going to college up at Lehigh where I was um, doing track and field and cross country and was going to school to be a materials engineer with the hope of, or the intent of doing something with polymers, which is the materials that most of the shoes are made out of. So any kind of synthetic plastic or something along that lines. And then I ended up sticking around for grad school. So when I finished up in 2001, um, at first I was looking at the running industry and there's very, very few engineers in it. It's crazy to think, you think of a company like New Balance, they only have a handful of footwear engineers. Really? So I ended up first going um, to IBM up in New York and worked there for two years before landing the opportunity from the guy who owned Haddonfield Running Company at the time, put me in connection with somebody at New Balance. Oh, so cool. I went up to New Balance for about two years, and I'm a diehard Philadelphia sports fan and living in Boston. Go Eagles. Just, yeah, <laughs> just didn't click. So I butted heads with a lot of people, and um, I miss being down here. I wanted to come back home to South Jersey, where I was from, mm -hmm. and the guy who would help me get the job at New Balance was looking to sell the store in Haddonfield. So at that point, it was just a little one-store operation. We were across the street from where we are now in Haddonfield. So I took a line of equity against my house in Boston, rented my house to a bunch of people, and moved into the back of the Haddonfield store. So I lived on a little futon in the back of the store for about a year or two um, until things kind of started to get off the ground and pick up a little bit. Now, how was that? Was that challenging for you to like... Or was that just you were so passionate about getting the business started that you were like, the futon's perfect? <laughs> um, you know, with... The runner lifestyle, we live pretty, pretty simple. So as long as I have a bed and a pair of running shoes, um, I didn't oh, okay. need much else. And I actually ended up a year into it breaking my foot pretty bad. Um, I oh. had two metal pins put in two of my metatarsals. So I was a lame duck anyway. So it was the only way I could get to work was actually to be at work. Oh, so it probably worked out really good. <laughs> yeah, it worked out, it worked out for the better anyway. So I took, yeah. I lost like you know, four or five months of running with this. It's the only injury I've ever had and it wasn't even from running. That's the funny part. So. Oh, wow. So does that give you any problems now when you run? No, I've run all my PR since I broke my foot. Oh, well, see, you needed to break your foot. To... Blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you now have four stores, right? Correct. Yeah. So you went from one small store to four stores and you're also the owner of a restaurant, right? Or the bar? The one mile? restaurant right now and a second one that's on the way. That's quite some entrepreneurial <laughs> How do you balance all that together? Um, by running, because it keeps me sane. Um, <laughs> no, so I've got, like, my staff at the running stores, is they're phenomenal. I mean, TJ, who's been there for, he's actually been there longer than me. So okay. I inherited him. He's younger than me, but he was working there in, um, right from college. So he's been there basically his whole life, runs all the stores, and everybody else there is great. So we're more of, like, you almost would consider us more family than employees. Like, I don't consider anybody really an employee. Yeah, um, that's great. And we all hang out all the time. So, you know, the 15 people that work for me, we all, you know, run it great. And now the restaurant industry, it was a lot of people I already knew. And with being in the running industry, we constantly put on events after races mm. and stuff. So it kind of made sense to, to look into the, you know, a way to do entertainment and also with the amount of um, fundraisers that we do. Yeah, so yeah. That's extremely extremely um, fundraiser driven with, you know, with races, with helping the high schools as budgets get tighter at these high schools, they don't have the funding to do what they used to do. Yeah. Now we do a ton of don dine and donates at the, the restaurant or we'll actually do, you know, donate all the food and let them sell tickets to it. So um, it's really helped some of the schools out in the running meet area, like Triton and um, Timber Creek with getting yeah. the schools a little bit more funding. And then through the running store, we basically give, you know, any kid that doesn't have shoes now, we'll donate shoes over if we can. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So that's kind of my biggest passion about all of it is kind of more the high school community. Yeah. I mean, the parents and the adults are who, you know, keep us in business. But from what I like to do is, you know, I like to do cross country and the track and stuff with that with the kids. Because if you can get them into it, a lot of them can also get them into school. Right. And they probably offer scholarships too for that, for colleges. And, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good. So I would not be wrong in saying running is your passion, right? You're very yeah. passionate about running. What has been your favorite race so far? So I was a sprinter in high school. I became, I was too slow for, I went to a division one school and was a little too slow to be a division one sprinter. In her. <laughs> I got moved up to longer stuff, which was good because then when I got out of college, I went all the way up to the marathon and even into some of the ultra stuff. Hmm. And now I've come all the way back down to running the mile again. But if I was to say the favorite race I've ever run is probably uh, Grandma's Marathon in Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, that's an awesome name. Why is it called Grandma's Run? <laughs> it, it's the Italian restaurant that sponsors it. Oh, okay. Uh, Grandma's. So it is just the, the city of Duluth is awesome. It's the best put on race I've ever been to. No offense to all the race directors around here. Yeah. So, but um, they just do it right. It's a perfect size. It's about 8,000 people. It's run along the Great Lake. It's in the middle of June, so the weather's usually pretty good up there. It's just perfect. You know, I don't have any complaint. And I've actually had probably the worst races of my life on that course. I've never oh, run, really? <laughs> but the race itself has always been great. Oh, cool. But now my big thing is now, now I'm back on track or doing track stuff, so running the mile and the half mile. Um, there's a great race I do up at, up at called New Balance Games, which I would actually be running this weekend if I wasn't coming back from being sick, mm. which is cool because it's part of the pro circuit, so – they put us old masters runners out there with a bunch of the pros if they're in the same meet. So we get some a uh, few fans to watch us run. Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. So now do you travel all over just for runs or do you stay I do, local? Like we're doing track. Yeah. So I'm going to race this year. I'll race at Cornell this weekend. Um, and then nationals is down in Louisiana at LSU in March for indoor track. So with indoor track, there's not a lot of facilities around here. So yeah kind of have to travel and with finding higher level masters races it also requires kind of jumping all over the place to find a good race yeah yeah oh that's really cool so that it's must fun. keep you busy love, yes what were you going to say before that you love what no, it keeps me very busy yeah i'm traveling all the time it's just hard like i said it's hard to find the hardest part of it is here we have to train outside so you know oh. doing track high you know intense speed workouts outside when it's 20 degrees with a 10 mile an hour wind gets rough that might benefit you though, because like if you can get through that yes. weather, <laughs> indoor should be a piece of cake, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. So, do you only run, or do you do any other kind of exercises? I do a lot of core strength and stuff. I have an issue that if I do weights or do other things, I put on weight very easily, which most people would be a blessing if they can yeah. put on muscle. Whereas with trying to be a distance runner, I'm trying to stay you know as light as I can Ooh, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So my body likes to weigh 180 to 100. 85 pounds and I need to weigh 160 when I race so I'm basically wait a minute aren't you like super tall you're like over six foot aren't you five almost six five eleven oh. you know, like distance runners I'm head even at 160 I'm heavy compared to a lot of distance really runners. huh people are skinny man they're little little <laughs> I ideally will um you know just to try to keep my weight lower not do a lot of cross training mm. and I also I have a sports hernia too so it also kind of limits what else I can do yeah. I don't have any pain when I run, but anything where I have to externally rotate my hip or my foot outwards, it'll flare up. Oh, so wow. That's what I can do. And also, I don't have much time to do anything else. I get yeah. my one hour a day to go run, and then it's off to work. Yeah, I would imagine with, with what, five businesses, almost six businesses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So let's dive into the topic today. Okay. So, how important is it to get the right shoe for your activity? So the, the most important part, which is what most people would never believe, is, is more the size than even the shoe these days. Um, so many people, and no offense to the ladies out there, women are more guilty of it than men, <laughs> do not like to wear the shoe size they need. Mostly everybody wears shoes that are too small. So, and what that does is it doesn't, it restricts blood flow in your foot. It doesn't mm -hmm. let your foot disperse force appropriately when it lands. So when your foot lands on the ground, it's supposed to splay, which in right. splay means for the toes to spread apart to disperse the force. Mm -hmm. Most people don't wear shoes that, that do that. So we deal with a lot of people that have done dance, um, soccer players. Yeah. Ice, ice hockey is the most guilty. 
they wear shoes two sizes too small. Yeah, I was like, just, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I was actually a professional ballet dancer and our point shoes had to be two sizes smaller than your street shoe. And your yeah. foot is jammed in there, which is interesting because like loose was not what we wanted ever. Um, yeah. But I know for me, I wear normally a five and a half shoe. So I have a really small foot. And I was so excited when I go to orthotics because I was like, I have sixes. I have like a whole yeah. new shoe <laughs> choices open up to me. <laughs> yeah. And the average human foot size, like a lot of women think like seven is the average size. The average shoe size we sell for women now is nine, if not nine and a half. Oh, really? You know, when a lot of people are like, oh, I have such big feet. I'm like, you don't have big feet. So, I mean, we have freshman girls coming in their size 11. Wow. So the human foot's just gotten bigger. I mean, the average human's bigger than they used to be. So. Right. Right. I but, missed that genetic uh, curve yeah. there. But. <laughs> having yeah. that, that key component of having a shoe not only be in the right um, length, but also be in the right width. So that's one of the things that we're way different than, you know, going to a Dick Sporting Goods or a General Sporting Goods stores. We carry all the shoes in widths and we actually measure your foot, which 90% right. of America doesn't even know what a Brannock is anymore. A Brannock is the device you stand up on and someone measures your foot. I didn't know that was the official name. Yeah. And I'm most glad people go to somewhere, you don't, <laughs> unless you go to a mom and pop, you know, uh, yes. brown or a store or a real technical running store, you're never going to see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, or yeah. someone take, I, I will say, I know I saw it in one of the big box stores, but there's nobody there to like actually fit your foot. So, yeah. so yeah. and that's what we'll do is we'll sit with you like one-on-one, -on -one, go through, measure your foot, measure the width, talk to you about what you need, watch you walk, look at your mechanics and then go about picking the shoe. And, Right now, the shoe industry is going through a very interesting time between you're seeing these shoes come out with the, the uh, carbon plates in them, the Nike 4% and the mm. Nike Next percent, and times are starting to get faster. And now they're saying, is the shoe doing it? Is the, the humans getting faster? Interesting. Um, so running's going through a whole new, almost like a little resurgence and boom and getting good press and bad press. And I'd say basically any press the sport gets is, is good press usually, unless it's, you know. A doping or a steroid scandal, something on that line. Right. But, you know, if the shoes are making a buzz, it's, it's good. Yeah. So do you think it's the shoes or do you think it's people are just getting faster? Um, I think, you know, I think with the onset, of, like in the high school world, with the onset of the internet, high school's kids seeing other kids run fast, mm -hmm. makes them want to run fast. Yeah. So I think you're seeing, you know, the internet play a little bit of a role in that, but the internet's been around forever now. Um, but yeah, the shoes, what they do probably make people a little bit more efficient, but I mean, everything technology advances. So, right. you know, the human body advances and so does technology. And long as it's not some, if, if it's something everybody can get, then it's a player, a fair field. Right. And I think that's the issue right now is if you have a sponsorship with Nike, you'll get the Nike shoes. But if you're sponsored by Brooks or Asics or Hoka, you can't wear that Nike shoe. Mm. That's where, you know, they're trying to figure out how do you level, level the playing field. I mean, you think about it in NASCAR. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, everybody in NASCAR has to have the same type of car. You just have to have a better crew to make you faster. So hmm. if you train harder, then you should be better. You shouldn't be able to have a shoe that makes you better. Right. Remember years ago with swimming when all the world records were getting broken, they were wearing the, the neck to ankle full length body suits that they would cut through the water better. Oh. And then all the world records are getting crushed and then they banned the, the suits. Suits. Hmm. So they said it was too much of an advantage. So if this shoe is too much of an advantage, We'll see. I mean, it's it's hard to do. It hasn't been around. It's only been you know a couple of years that these have been out, and now just really became available for the public about maybe a year or two ago. Hmm, that's interesting. But Olympic yeah. trials are coming up in one month, and you know you've got more people qualified for this Olympic trials, I believe, than any other one. And the time standards were a little bit faster. So hmm. we'll see. That this yeah. Olympic trials at the end of February will be interesting because I think you're going to see a lot of new shoes out there on all the the pros that have contracts. Because mm -hmm. now you're trying to make the top three go to the Olympic team. So if you're ever going to debut a new shoe that's going to make someone faster, better that's, do it. That's the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. One of the things that I loved about the running company is, like you were saying, you truly really are a small business, um, a local small business. And I know you mentioned it just a second ago, but I love that you guys do gait analysis. When yeah. I walked in there, um, I used to be a physical therapist assistant. And when I walked in and, and they were like, well, let's see you run and walk. And I was like, oh, they're doing gait analysis. I was like, this is awesome. Like, I, I don't know of any other stores that actually do that, um, which I think is so unique to you guys because 
you know, it's one thing to try on the shoe and be like, oh, this is comfortable and do the little finger test with the, the edge of your toe. Yeah. And even if you get measured, but if you're like not actually having someone look at your gait, I mean, that's a big, big helpful point, you know, to have in your company. Um, was that something that you had set and decided in the beginning when you opened the store or is that something you incorporated later no. on? That's, that's what makes, you know, the run specialty industry what it is. So, you know, there's stores like us all over the country, um, each state, you know, in South Jersey, there's us and then there's Cape May running company down there. We're the ones that really specialize in this. Um, and the difference is we don't do it on a treadmill. You'll see some places do it on a treadmill. And the only reason I, I'm against that is a treadmill makes everybody pronate because, and pronate means your feet run, rolling inwards. Mm -hmm. The reason why is you're running on something that's going the opposite way as you. So when you impact on it, it's almost natural the way your foot catches for it to roll in. So a lot of people end up with shoes that are too corrective or what is called a stability shoe when they don't need it. Hmm. So That's looking at somebody you know, on the concrete, looking at them walk, and then putting them in the shoe and having them walk or run within the store gives you a much more realistic view than when you're on a treadmill. Because it's much better, as much as everybody thinks the treadmill is great to run on, it's soft and it's bouncy. Mm -hmm. still not better biomechanically for the way you run like you're you're confined within that little space you're on you're running on a ground that's going the opposite way of you yeah um and you just can't you can't plant and really do what your body wants to do and if you want to slow down or pick it up you can't do that without hitting a button you just right. can't slowly gradually do it so right. treadmills aren't aren't exactly the best thing to to be on yeah which you're probably going to hate me but like i would so prefer to run on a treadmill you know it keeps you motivated like when you get tired the treadmill keeps you going yeah so yeah and it propels working. you too I mean so yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not hurting you but it's not it's not helping you it's not a protector like a lot of people think it is I mean the best thing to do is, but we can't do it in South Jersey is you know to run on a nice grass or dirt path but you know we kind of live in a concrete jungle here where there's not a lot paved I do I would say probably over half my running is either on dirt or a track if not more mm. so I'll run the same loop by my house I live over in Hatton Township just so I can run on the dirt around a lake yeah so and I've never besides breaking my foot I haven't been injured you know really in the 35 years I've been running yeah um I know out where I live I live out in um more we're like cows and horses and stuff yeah. but um you know there are some trails that you can run that are like the old railroad tracks yeah. that they have kind of paved over and stuff like that but yeah um yeah, I know for me, um, like treadmill running, I just, it's, it's kind of like what you're saying about, you know, you have the elements to deal with and all that. Like, I just, I know it's a controlled environment <laughs> and I can run. Um, but so if somebody were to come into your store and say they were like me and, and said, you know, I'm really more of a treadmill runner, does that determine a different shoe for them? No, and you know, it's still, I mean, your, your biomechanics are what they are. You're mm -hmm. going to get a more, you know, realistic and true view of it watching you on you know stable ground not on a treadmill but when you run on a treadmill i mean if you need the support you, the treadmill just makes you look like you need more support than what you do mm -hmm. so you want to get that you know take that illusion away and look at somebody really off of a treadmill hmm. interesting so the other big okay. thing you do is you look at the wear pattern on a shoe too so we always mm -hmm. tell everybody when you come in you know bring your old shoes and when i look at the bottom i could see do you strike a lot in the back of the shoe do you strike on the forefoot does your foot right. roll in does your foot roll out um even looking at the way your laces and your tongue are on the shoe will mm. give some information in the way your foot rolls. So, and a lot of times if people do land way up on their forefoot, you really don't need that much support because you're past that point of pronation. You know, pronation occurs from when the heel goes to the midfoot to the forefoot. If you're landing midfoot to forefoot already, you don't need that. And now you're starting to see a lot of the companies, instead of using the word the term stability like they did, they're now using the term guidance. So mm. they're making shoes that will guide your foot as opposed to putting this hard blocking material underneath the arch. Mm. And a lot of that is from Hoka, which is, if you're not, I hate to say, if you're not a true runner, if you're not somebody really in the running industry, you're not going to know that, that company. They make really pretty much just running shoes. They're very thick. They used to be kind of ugly and orthopedic looking. <laughs> and now they're the number three company in the industry. It's crazy how much they've grown. And you actually sit down inside that shoe. So it's almost like you're sitting in a cradle. Oh, and what cool. that does is if the foot wants to roll inwards or outwards, it just guides it forward. So because mm -hmm. you sit in this, you have like a little bit of a wall kind of crawling up on each side of your foot, almost like an orthotic. 
It's almost right. like a dollar. So that just guides the foot forward. Because you think about it, if you're trying to run from A to B, the fastest way to get from A to B is in a straight line. So if your foot's rolling in or rolling out, you're not going in a straight line. You want your foot to roll forward. Mm. That's where that has become, you know, and it's, if you listen to Nike, Nike's now giving credit to Hoka for kind of that innovation. And Nike has a new shoe that just came out a couple of days ago that they're implying that, um, that philosophy and you know, engineering style or whatever you would want to call it into their shoes because they saw what Hoka did with it. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's great that technology is, you know, like, you know, how we were talking about how it's either technology or they're just getting faster, but I'm sure together it's like a superpower, you know, I mean, yeah. they can't make, they can make athletes so much more better. Also going to your website, you guys list um, local running events, right? Yep. yep. We try to take care, basically list any event within like 50 miles of the, the South Jersey area. Yeah. Which is great to know. Cause I know there's a lot of like a lot of clients that I work with, they want to do a lot of five K's, which yep. I know are probably more on the smaller scale. Um, but, um, that's good that you're a resource for them and they can find, you know, local running events because a lot of people are like, where are the local running events? And I'm like, I'm not sure, <laughs> but yeah, now I know I can send them to you. <laughs> yep. And we're one of the few places that still, we have like a little uh, board area and, um, what would you want to, I guess like display area in the front where people can put out brochures and advertisements. So if you're doing any sort of fundraising events involved in running or race itself where you're not using online. Mm -hmm. Um, Ainsley's Angels, which has become a very, very big group in this area that we do a lot of fundraising for, which is getting um, for children that need to be in some sort of uh, like a wheelchair or help a chair that helps them out with getting around mm. now help fundraise money for the push chairs so that they, those children can participate in whether it's yeah. a 5k or a 10k or a half marathon. And then now they've got, you know, the, they're called adaptive strollers. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But then they can also use that in swimming and biking now so that you can, you know, these kids can get to do a triathlon with, you know, a family member or a friend and get to get the same experience. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great idea. Okay. So I do have a speed round coming up for you, but before we get to that, <laughs> uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, me personally or the store? <laughs> Whichever you prefer. If you don't want to give out personal information, that's no, I, I actually, I'm overly open with mine. My, I, you know, my, my, personal Facebook page. I even have my own cell phone number on it. So I oh, tell, wow. you know, reach out to me all the time. I'm, you know, I mean, to get back to you that same day, but I try to get back to everybody, you know, at some point or another. So, you know, my email is, is Dave at runningco.com. And then if you want my, you know, if you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me on Facebook. I'm just it's Dave Welsh on there. And then if you really need me, my cell phone's on there. Don't, don't be afraid to give me a call or whatever. Send me, a, send me a text. It's probably better than a call because I never have my ringer on. Cause I'm usually always talking to somebody. So I keep <laughs> I'm the same off. way. <laughs> yeah. And also you also have a uh, Facebook, right? No, Instagram. Yeah. Both. Yeah. So Instagram, the, um, I'm bad. Cause I'm not, I don't do, I do our Facebook page. Our Instagram is, I think it's SJ running co. We may okay. need that up. I don't know off the top of my head what our Instagram is. There's yes. Twitter also. Oh, Twitter. Okay, good. Um, so all this information I will have in the show notes over at shapeitupfitness.com. And, and you also do deals and events, right? You said on Facebook and Instagram? Okay. Yep. Facebook is the one we, I update, you know, update constantly with it. We have, you know, almost 10,000 followers on Facebook. So uh, that's the quickest way. And that's then cool. I have a girl who works with me, Holly, who's a social media genius. She loves doing Instagram and Twitter and everything else. So she plays around on all that stuff for me. Cool. Okay. All right. So you're ready for the speed round? Okay. <laughs> All right. So the speed round for anybody listening as uh, new to it is just a bunch of random questions that I throw together and kind of like first response, whatever you want to throw out. Okay. Okay. All Perfect. right. So question number one, are you a cat or a dog person? Uh, I have to be a dog person now because my girlfriend has a beagle. <laughs> oh, cool. What's the beagle's name? <laughs> What'd you say? What's the beagle's name? Oh, Biggie. Biggie. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. Coffee or tea? Neither. Beer? I've, I've, never, <laughs> I've never had coffee, tea, or soda in my life. Really? Nope. None? None. I'm, I'm all for the non-soda, but I don't know if I can do it without my I'm coffee. Drinking, I'm drinking water. So. Good, yes. Water is definitely essential. So just water. That's all yep. you drink. Okay. Water and orange juice. <laughs> Most influential person in your life? Oh, it would have to be my... Um, my high school coach, Mr. Tom Priory, who was there for me 24 seven for four years of my life and for the past 20 years of my life. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And he still is around today helping you out? Yep. 
Yep. Oh. Whenever I need need it, uh, an open ear, he is the best open ear I can find. So that's great. That's awesome. It's nice when teachers have an effect on you. Yeah. And in a positive guidance. way. So <laughs> What's that? I lucked out. He was my guidance counselor and my coach. And oh, nice. Very so good. I spent plenty of time with him. <laughs> a lot of guidance for you, huh? Exactly. <laughs> so what is your favorite social media outlet? So what's your favorite social media? I mean, probably, I mean, Facebook's the only one I really know how to use. I don't even understand Instagram or Twitter. They're over my head and I think I'm too old for them. I don't know. <laughs> so I, Facebook is the one I grew up on um, and that's the one I tend to use the most. Good. What is your favorite movie? Oh, Caddyshack, Far and Away. <laughs> okay. I still have it on VHS. <laughs> Do you have a VHS player? Okay. I <laughs> okay, have a VHS player. Um, what is your favorite song to listen to when you run, if you listen to music when you run? I haven't listened to music when I run since college. So, okay. so what's your favorite song? My favorite song? Um, oof. I'd have to go two. So my favorite song to calm me down would probably be um, Jeff Buckley from the album Grace. And then... Otherwise, my favorite song would probably be now that I was listening before I run is AWOL Nation song actually called Run. Okay, that's appropriate. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dave. And you can find Dave at the running company. No, you can find the running company at runningco.com, right? Correct. You got okay. it. Okay. Awesome. I'm actually going now to do a track workout because it's the first day without wind. Oh, <laughs> good. It's good. Fine. It's so cold, though, isn't it? It's, I, I don't mind the cold as long as it's not windy. Oh, yeah. yeah. The wind is my biggest enemy out there in the running world. Yeah. This is why I run on a treadmill. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is outside. You're good to go. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks so much, David. Awesome. Thank you. All right, thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Hey, if you love today's podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Head over to iTunes and leave a review. I can't wait to read what you write. Until next time, remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits. You can find all the show notes over at shapeitupfitness.com.